the seal cycle really starts at the end of November, 1st of December, when the big bulls start coming ashore on the beaches, and they're coming ashore to claim territory or geography, and they will begin fighting amongst themselves to determine the hierarchy. Who's in charge, who's in control, who's going to control what areas of the beach. Those guys that do gain control, we call them beach masters, and they're going to hold on to that territory because in the first few weeks of December, the pregnant females are going to start coming out of the water to have their pups. And I know this is going to sound weird, but literally the pregnant females that are from this rookery will come ashore within a couple of months and have their pups on all of these beaches. When I say this rookery, the rookery is about eight miles long and incorporates about 40 beaches in here. So what you're going to see are two beaches here. Uh, and there are many, many other beaches, a lot, most of which don't even have public access. And they're very, very well hidden. Uh, the seals tend to prefer that. The seals are somewhat reclusive, uh, and they don't really like human contact. So that's one of the reasons that they tend to have their rookeries on islands. They go, they go so far as most of their rookeries are on the ocean side of the island. They don't even want to face the land. So uh, they're somewhat reclusive. So the females will come ashore because they're going to have their pups. The males will try and gather those females up into his area of the beach. He wants to create what we call a harem. A harem is 20 to 50 pregnant females that that male bull is going to watch over. And he's going to watch over that group and protect them from the younger males that may try and get in and mate with them early, protect them from other bulls that may try and intercede and, and take the, steal them away over into his area. And all we want to, although we want to think that his intentions are altruistic, they're not. He has one thing on his mind. <laughs> and he wants to be the first one to mate with her. So she'll have her pup on the beach, and she will, after she comes out of the water, within about three to five days, she'll have her pup. And she'll nurse that pup for about 30 days. At the end of 30 days, she comes into estrus. She's ready to mate. She's run out of milk. And the big male bull, that, that beach master that, uh, whose harem she's a part of, wants to have the first right to mate with her, and that's one of the reasons that he brought her up into his area. So he will mate with her, but she'll mate with many other males before she's allowed to get to the water. And that's really her objective at this point in time. She's been on the beach for a month to a month and a half. She's given birth, she has nursed that buck, and all of the milk that she has created has come from her own fat stores. Because while the seals are on the beach, they're fasting. They're not eating, there's nothing in these waters for them to forage for and it's not part of their foraging migration. So she's hungry. She's also lost a lot of weight, anywhere between a quarter and a third of her own body weight. And then at the end of all that, if that wasn't bad enough, she's had to put up with the romantic advances of all these male, bull, male elephants. Here. So by the time she gets to the water, she's exhausted. She's just physically completely beat up. And even though from that mating, she does have a fertilized egg, what she doesn't have is the nutritional ability to, to support both herself and pregnancy. She has the ability to hold that fertilized egg in suspension. It's called delayed implantation or... Diapause. Diapause. Uh, and she'll hold that egg in, in, in suspension. Literally, the egg is not developing, although it is in her uterus, while she goes out on her first foraging migration of the year. And she will swim out, and she's a, a mature female, she'll swim about halfway to Japan. They like to forage, females like to forage in the deep trenches of the North Pacific, north of the Hawaiian Islands, and roughly half the distance between here and the Japan Archipelago. And she will, there we go. Look at that, good dagger. Good dagger. And she will spend about two months foraging for food, 20 to 22 hours a day, be up at the surface of the water for about three to four minutes while she saturates her blood with oxygen. They don't hang at the surface of the water because that's where their predators hang out. After, as soon as she has saturated her blood, she watches out for seagulls. She will, uh, she'll turn and she'll head down into the water and she will stay down on her foraging dive 20 to 30 minutes. They can stay down 45 minutes to an hour. There is a good story that comes from our researchers that tell us they found a female that was down at 5,750 feet for more than two and a half hours. That's crazy. Still trying to figure out what she was doing down there. There's not a lot of other food down there. They expel the air out of their lungs. They're not carrying them. They don't, they don't hold their breath. They, they saturate their blood. With they eat those yeah, iluminescent fish that swim in schools down there. That's what they eat. They Mostly eat. fish? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, the females like something called lanternfish, which are a very small bioluminescent fish. 
Mm-hmm. So about um, 78% of the female diet is actually fish. So the females tend to Cool. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Nice. So at the end of that two months, uh, she will come back to the beach for her annual molt. These guys are mammals, and because they're mammals, they have to change out their skin and fur uh, regularly. But they can't do it where they live, out in the ocean, where it gets very, very cold. So they come ashore, and they spend about one month on the beach where they rest, and they go through what's called a catastrophic molt. The catastrophic molt is where their fur literally falls off their bodies. Their, their fur is not used for thermal regulation, as is uh, many other marine mammals. It's really only a protective layer on top of their uh, the rest of their body. Uh, but if you notice that it's pretty light, it's pretty delicate, these samples that we're show, showing you, uh, we have to replace regularly because they fall apart after a very short period of time. So it doesn't keep them warm, it's just an exterior? Yeah, it's just an exterior covering, yeah. That's, 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 that's all it is. I'll give you an example. This is blubber. These guys have um, about 100 hairs per square inch in their fur. Sea otters have about a million hairs per square inch in their fur. Sea otters use their fur to keep them warm and keep them dry. Elephant seals just use it to keep all their parts together. They have a very thick layer of blubber <laughs> underneath that that what protects their uh, their rubber organs. So she comes ashore for her molt, and her molt will chill. The, the fur will just kind of literally fall off her body. But it's an important part of the process for her because at the end of that, it triggers the release of a series of hormones in her body that takes that held fertilized egg that was delayed in planting, and it activates it and implants it in her uterus. She is now fully pregnant. Turns out my mom was wrong. You can be kind of pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Once she's through with that process, then she heads back out into the ocean for her second foraging migration of the year, and she will spend the rest of her pregnancy foraging for food for both herself and her fetus until she comes back ashore to have her pup the following winter and start the whole cycle all over again. You notice that she's a female and they all have the same cycle. They come ashore on the beach, they have their pup, they nurse, they mate. They get back in the water, they eat, they come and they molt, they go back for the rest of their pregnancy, and they come back out at the same time. So it's one of Mother Nature's ways of bringing them all on the beach so that the males are here to mate with them and the females are here to have their pups. Females come into me- in the estrus and they're ready to mate. Males are here and they're ready to mate. They're always ready to mate. <laughs> uh, and they turn them loose. So it's a cycle that, that continues on and on. So there's a couple of other things that are happening around the rookery at this time also. As the young pups, after they are born, you might wonder, well, what you know, mom went to go find something to eat. We have no idea who dad was because that was one of 20 seals the previous season. We don't even know, even know if it's on the same beach. In one of Mother Nature's first attempts at humor, when the elephant seals are born, even though they're going to spend their life in the ocean, they don't know how to swim. And so job one for them is to learn how to swim. It's one of the reasons that we think the seals like this particular area of the coast. It's got these volcanic rocks that fall off the side, and during low tide, those rocks form tide pools that are nice and calm and protected against ocean waves and currents and provides a good environment for the seals to teach themselves how to swim. So after mom disappears, the pups will band together in what we call wiener pods. Uh, These are pups that have been weaned, uh, and they will spend their time playing together and working in the ocean together to learn how to swim. After about a month to a month and a half of teaching themselves and playing with their buddies, a combination of their biology and hunger sets in, and they will head out into the ocean on their first foraging migration. they got a big job ahead of them now. They're going to have to figure out what food looks like and then how to catch it. Uh, and unfortunately, um, that, that's a bit of a uh, tall learning curve for them. During the first three years of their lives, elephant seals on their foraging migrations only have about a 50% chance of coming back to the beach. Hmm. So there's a, high, there's a high combination of predation on these smaller seals. Uh, when they are out there in the water, some of them are more successful than others in terms of identifying food and being able to capture it. Uh, but the fall off curve for marine seals is very, very high. It's a hard life. It is a hard life. It's a about better life with mom. When they're born, they only weigh about 50 to 75 pounds. 
And in just 30 days, with one month of nursing off of mom, that pup will grow to be almost 300 pounds. Mom has one of the richest milks in the entire mammalian world. At the end of her nursing cycle, her milk is about 65% milk fat. It's like wow. the consistency of butter. Oh. Mayonnaise. Then we get very, ones very that they get, after they're done with their mom, they find another seal sometimes. <laughs> not been able to, you know, doesn't have a pup anymore or lost it or he still has some milk and if she'll let him on then they get they call them super wieners they get really fast they get like they're almost comical they're like roly-poly but it's interesting the male pups their teeth erupt later so a mom will accept a male pup that's trying to get extra milk you know where the female pups their teeth come in sooner so they're going to be on top so, which, which, is a, which is a good and bad story because the bigger they get, the longer that they have a chance of surviving in the ocean without being able to find food. Unfortunately, the bigger they get, the more uh, delicious they look to great whites and orcas or their predators. Uh, so you can imagine this 300, 400, 500 pound weanling that's kind of searching in the ocean for food, what that looks to, to a yeah, Do you guys great get white. orcas coming in here? We have this summer. Yeah, they should have the what do the uh, males do?